Welcome back. Now that we have the player data and economy initialization in place, let's set up virtual purchases. That is, purchases with in-game resources, like purchasing health potions with gold. Before we head to the dashboard to configure the purchases, let's get some Unity setup stuff out of the way. Create a couple new buttons, one for a virtual purchase of buying a health potion for 20 gold, and a real money purchase of buying 100 gold for some amount of real money. I also have a simple UI display of gold and health potions since the logs are a bit small for you to read. In the package manager, install the in-app purchasing package, and then after this is installed, click on configure, and that will take you to the project settings where you need to toggle on the in-app purchases. You'll likely see some red warning text here about needing a Google public key. We'll handle this later when we do a real money purchase. For now, just click on go to the dashboard. All right, we go to economy, of course, to configuration. And when you're there, click on add resource and select virtual purchase. This is all really easy to set up. So I'm just going to show you what I have. The name I have is health potion virtual purchase and the ID will generate as the same, all caps. The player receives one health potion and the player spends 20 gold currency. There's a spot for custom data below, just the same as the items before. Though know that this is purchase custom data and is not attached to an item. The reward item will not have any custom data when generated, so we'll need to add that via code if we want to do it that way. I want to note that you could also have nothing configured here for the reward and you can handle the reward in cloud code. And that might be a good way to go if you're using cloud save and game data, which we've not covered yet, for your own economy or item system. Add another resource of type real money purchase. I call mine gold purchase 100 because it purchases 100 gold. I also have the IDs here for the Apple App Store and Google Play. The documentation recommends to use the same ID for both. Click update, and then the configuration screen helpfully tells us that our item and currency are both used in purchases. The final step here is very important and easy to miss. We need to publish our configuration. With that complete, navigate to your cloud code solution. Go up to project and add a new class called store service. We're creating a new class because we don't want to clutter up our economy service class with store logic. Store service will handle purchases and therefore it will need to interact with our player economy service class for things like adding or updating inventory items. In your module config class, we need to register the player economy service as a singleton using Unity's dependency injection system. When we register services as singletons using config dependencies add singleton, we're telling the system to create a single instance of that service that will be shared across all requests within the same worker process. So for example, when cloud code needs to create a store service instance, it looks at the constructor parameters and automatically provides a logger instance specific to the store service class and the singleton instance of player economy service we registered in module config. And let's also define the ID for the virtual health potion purchase, because we're going to need that. Our first method in store service is virtual purchase health potion. When working with inventory items with custom data, we need additional logic because the virtual purchase system creates a basic inventory item without any custom data. We need to handle the custom data like amount, damage, mana requirement. We need to handle that separately. We'll get to that, but first we should process virtual purchase, which sends the purchase ID constant as an argument. In this method, we use game API client economy purchases make virtual purchase async, which requires a purchase request, so we create that above with the virtual purchase ID. I've also included a log for checking what has been virtually purchased in the dashboard. Make virtual purchase will deduct the cost and add the item. And if you're adding an item that doesn't have any custom amount data, then you're done. However, our potions involve custom data for amount. If we add amount one as custom data to the potion, we'll have an issue where we have a health potion with amount four, say, and a new health potion with amount one that we just purchased. And we really don't want that. We want one item that has an amount property. And if we don't do anything, we'll have a health potion that doesn't have any custom data. Okay, so I want to keep things simple and perhaps give you something useful. So let's do a cleanup method for any item that has null custom data or an amount property in the custom data that is zero or less. And that should go in the economy service because that makes the most sense for that class's responsibilities. 
A part of your server-side logic will often include methods that clean up or check for anything out of place, and that's one reason why we're processing purchases or rewards via cloud code. In this cleanup method, clean up null or zero amount items, we'll use our get player inventory method, this time getting all items that have the item key. Then we just for each through the items, parse the amount out, and if any item has zero or less amounts, we'll add the item to a list of items to delete one by one. And here's that delete inventory item method, which uses economy inventory delete item async. After that, let's continue with the flow back in the store service. Next, we do add or update inventory item amount, passing the health potion key and one as the amount. We need this new method because we shouldn't assume that the item exists in the player's inventory. Go back to the economy service class and let's implement add or update item amount. This method will use other methods we wrote in the last video. First, we get a list of any inventory items that have the item key. We'll get the first item that matches the key, then for better readability, we create a boolean for whether the item exists in the player's inventory and set up the total amount as the amount to add. If the item exists, we can parse out the existing amount of potions. The amount will be zero if the parsing fails. Then we add the current amount to the amount to add. Whether the item exists or not, we create instance data for the total amount. We're also including an optional parameter for any other custom data we want to include for the item. Finally, if the item exists in the inventory, we update the existing item with a new custom data. And we're going to overwrite the pre-existing instance data of the item in this example. If the item doesn't exist, we use our add new inventory item method, passing along the item's key and custom data. Okay, so the virtual purchase in this case is deducting gold, adding a potion with null custom data. We're deleting that potion, and then we're adding one to the amount property of our existing potion item. Adding the potion only to immediately delete it is perhaps a bit silly. So in this particular case, we can just remove the reward from the virtual purchase configuration, then no cleanup is needed. Should you move on to using cloud save and game data for your items, in this way you can still use the economy service purchase system. Finally, we use the player economy service again to return the updated player economy data, which contains the two dictionaries, one for currencies and one for items. Before we go back to Unity, build your solution. And then in the editor, generate the bindings and deploy the module. Create a new script client side called Player Economy Manager. Like the Player Data Manager, this will be responsible for keeping the player's economy data locally. At the top, define a local instance of player economy data with the two dictionaries for currencies and inventory. We also define the constant key for our in game gold currency. Next, we expose a public gold property, which acts as a convenient getter that returns the player's current gold. Internally, it calls a method that checks the currency's dictionary and returns the value for the gold currency key. If the currency is missing, it returns zero. We then define two events, player economy updated. This gets invoked whenever we receive new economy data. Other systems like the UI or store managers can subscribe to this to refresh what they display. Economy config synced is fired once the configuration from the economy service has been downloaded. This includes the purchase setups we define in the Unity dashboard. In start, we subscribe to the signed in event from the authentication service. Once a player signs in, we call sync economy config, which downloads the latest economy config from the server and fires economy config synced. By the time you want to initialize the store UI or use the economy definitions, we're working with up to date data from the dashboard. The handle economy update method is for other systems to call when they receive fresh economy data from the back end. This also centralizes economy updates in one place, so any part of your game that needs to know when the player's economy has changed can simply subscribe to the manager's update event. And finally, in on disable, let's unsubscribe from the player signed in event. Back to handle economy update, we can see this in action right now actually, because in the last video we left off with receiving a player data response, DTO, data transfer object from cloud code. And that response includes both player data and economy data. The player data manager handles the player's data, and then it should forward the economy data to the economy manager with that handle economy update method. Both managers save the data locally and invoke an update event with it. So this way we maintain a single source of truth for player data and the player's currency and inventory values. 
Back in Unity, go ahead and put Economy Manager on an object in your scene and drag it into the Player Data Manager. From here, create two new scripts, one for real-world purchases and another for virtual purchases. So create both a Virtual Store Manager and an IAP Store Manager. Virtual Store Manager needs the Economy Manager, and let's also include the ID for the Health Potion Virtual Purchase, a variable for the cost, and we can also do a fallback default value for the cost. In Start, let's create an instance of our bindings. Next, set the default value for the potion cost, and then let's initialize the virtual store when the economy config is synced. I'm including a log virtual purchases from config method. I think this just helps us get familiar with what aspects of the configuration look like. Then we initialize the purchase costs from the economy configuration. We don't have to use cloud code all the time. Here we want to get the costs of virtual purchase items. So let's use the economy service here instead of in cloud code. Read operations are fine directly through the SDK. We only care about protecting write operations. We can then get the virtual purchase by ID and in the costs, check for the gold costs. This way we can change the purchase amounts in the dashboard when the game is live, which makes a ton of sense for tweaking and special sales. After this, the purchase health potion method will be what our button click triggers. This method calls the virtual purchase health potion cloud code function, and then since we get the updated economy data with the additional health potion and the deduction of the cost to buy it, let's tell economy manager to handle the new economy data. However, before we do this, let's check if the player can afford the purchase locally. That saves the server call and is faster feedback for the player if they can't afford the virtual purchase. We'll just check the player's gold. If they can do the purchase here, you could optimistically grant a health potion and deduct the gold, but we're not going to do that. We'll just wait on the server. Create a game object for your store managers and put your virtual store manager on it, and it'll need the player economy manager. Add an on-click event to your button, drag the store manager to it, and have it trigger the purchase health potion method. Check that your virtual purchase is working before moving on to real money purchases. And you can also check your logs in the cloud code section of the dashboard because you should see that null potion item is removed from the player's inventory. If you remove the reward from the purchase configuration like I did, you'll instead see a log for the purchase, but there's nothing there for the reward. A better log in the process virtual purchase function in the cloud code solution would be to include the virtual purchase ID. So let's log that. You could also include the player ID too. I do have a note here that we could log the entire purchase with purchase response data to JSON. And if you do that, you'll see an amount parameter, but that's for individual items, not the custom data we've been working with. That's it for this one. In the next video we do in-app purchases, I'll see you there.